And fellas, let's get into it. Let's take this sumptuous feast to the table. The seafood platter. Would have been better off the boat, but uh, how do you like me opera house? <clears throat> is that what it is? <laughs> oh, thanks very much. Yeah, people have called it a cocky's comb in the past. Sulphur crested cockatoo. Right. <laughs> Missed that one, mate. Sorry. Hey, Geordie. Yo. Come on in, mate. Look at that seafood platter. <laughs> Let's go for it. Get into it. Geordie's our photographer on the uh, on the show and is taking some amazing photos of our food, oh, of our offerings. Of octopus, mate. Thank you. I've tried to base my Sydney salad on the ever-popular Caesar salad. I make sure there's a balance of salt and bitter, sweet and sour, and loads of texture and colour. Uh, the Opera House sales may be gimmicky, but the Whitloff or endive that make the sales do add the bitterness that I look for. Heaps of flavours. How hot's the wasabi? I didn't taste it. Oh, it's, oh, you know me with spice, mate. It could do with a bit more, but anyway. <laughs> you with wasabi, mate, you'd damn near kill us. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Dig in, Benjamin. Mm. Comment. Really, really well smoked. It, it well smoked. Okay. Well, the, the good thing about cooking with paper bark, that's that much is you will pump in quite a bit of smoke. The uh, the gnocchi works so well with that uh, mountain pepper barbecue sauce and yeah, the crab. Yeah, it does. The, the fruitiness of the mountain pepper barbecue sauce, the sweetness of the crab, and the subtle flavours of the smoky textures through the paper bark just bring it all together, okay. mate. All these recipes are on the website. Bit more detail there, Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> what a bad time to pick. Cheers, gentlemen. Terrific. Cheers. Cheers. Well, as I said, join us next time on Dining Down Under, where we're turning international cuisine upside down. Let's go. Ready to roll? My dessert's going to be ready about the time that uh, we get to the table. And we're off and racing. Enjoy. Looks beautiful, boys. So, I'll put a dessert there as well. While the boys are getting into the food, let's recap. The real secret to Mark's dish is the aniseed myrtle. Mark compared it to Chinese star anise, but I think it's much softer. You could simply add a dash of perno. As usual, on the website, as well as the recipes from Albert's Dig and in, uh, a whole host. So, visit us regularly, come back, have a look and enjoy the show and enjoy the food. Cheers. Aaron, are you lucky or what? We're not racing. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. That's what we want. <laughs> Cheers. See you next time. I'm uh, high tailing it. How are you guys doing? Not too far behind you there, Vic. Not too far. OK, we've got a letter from a, uh, a viewer as well. Great. And this wild lime pudding may look a bit ordinary, but it's filled with a tangy lime syrup and given some cream or sour cream, well, I could eat the lot myself. Do you know that you can't outrun a crocodile going in a straight line? So if you're ever in a situation where a crocodile's actually chasing you, you want to run that way, because their brains are so small they can't sort of move legs at different paces. So they can only run in a straight line, but they can outrun you in a straight line, no problem at all. There's a little bit of trivia today. That and other recipes that you saw on this show will be on the website. Let me read a letter while you have a taste. We don't expect you to eat that whole thing, Nicola. It's just a taste from the side. Give it a fair go, though. We have a letter from James McClarty from Auckland in New Zealand. Dear guys, I love the show and I just recently got a hold of some paper bark. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but the, su the stuff seems to stick to whatever I'm cooking. What should I do to avoid this? Presentation is everything. Well, that's true. The trick with paper bark is when you peel it, look at the two sides. One will be stringy, one won't. Make a gap between the paper bark and whatever you're cooking. Yep, yep, okay. The other thing is, if you do get a few little uh, fibres sticking there, don't worry about it. It's only fibre, it's good for you. Join us next week as we turn more international cuisine upside down on Dining Down Under. We'll talk a little bit about that, gentlemen. Thank you. And Jane, welcome to the show. Thank you. Jane's been, Jane has been powdering our faces for... Uh... Do you want to taste that, mate? I'm hogging it. Oh, <laughs> great. So dig in, have a taste. Mark's delicious dish of alpine peppered venison on rainforest herb linguine was topped with his poached pear. 
Ben described his creation as wine-drenched lamb, which was beautifully complemented with a bush tomato relish. You do need to be very careful with eucalyptus oil, I find, because some people are very sensitive to it. So a little bit goes a long, long way. Thanks. And I, it's a bit, yeah, indeed. Well, the idea is always to um, have just a little bit and actually taste it on the first, mm. maybe the second bite, the third bite. Then the, the eucalyptus oil, or the gum leaf oil, comes through quite carefully. And the, a word of warning, don't use ordinary gum leaf oil. It has to be food grade. Not real good for the liver otherwise. We've got a great feed. What did you think of it? Dig in. It's beautiful. It's very sweet. Very okay. Nice. Too sweet for you? No, very nice. Oh, good, good, good. And you taste the wattle in the bread? How about we get in there? And I believe we also have a letter from a viewer. I might read that, Vic, I think. Get in on it, mate. I'll be there shortly. Me too. Vic's got your dessert coming. Won't be a second. Excellent. I might Thank just you. start with this letter. Ugh. This letter comes from Mary Patterson from London in England. She says, Dear Mark, I watch you every week and when I get the chance. When I don't, I tape the show. I catch most of the, the episodes. My husband loves the Aussie spices. He likes me to use them, but he feels they have a slightly burnt flavour. How can I adjust that? Uh, there's a little bit on the bottom I'd better read. Best wishes, Mary. P.S. Are you single? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mary, the best thing to do with that, I feel, is um, just adjust your heat. Don't have your heat too hot. And with the, the flavours, add them at the end of the cooking process. That will eliminate all of these problems. Mark's cured barramundi is the feature of this dish and sits on top of the delicious rainforest herb linguine. This is fantastic. <laughs> That's the word we're looking for. Yeah. The recipes are on the website for these, plus the other dishes you saw on the show. Dig in, have a Go taste, ahead. certainly try the pavlova. You might want to even try that first, it's really good, not too sweet, so it won't spoil your appetite really? for the mains. <laughs> Here we are, turning international fusion cuisine upside down on Dining Down Under. And the best way to eat these, dip them in the sauce and eat them because that puts the flavour on your tongue. I'm going to go and join our guests and leave you guys to plate up. What I'm going to do is finish up putting my potatoes on the plate. I'm going to meet you out there, Mark. Let's eat. Guys, welcome. Tom, you've got a whole host of things to eat. And I've got a letter to read. Before I do, don't forget the recipes that we've seen today and uh, that we've cooked today and also seen today on the show are all on the website, so have a look at that. They look fantastic today. I think that's uh, we've done well. Mark's dish of slow-cooked shanks was creatively reassembled to make filled rounds of meat and then served with Hasselback pink eye potatoes. Fulmer Shulman. Dear Vic, Norman and I have been watching you, Ben and Mark, for quite a while. We love the show and we were wondering if you could give us a bit of info. A friend of ours added a special blend of Aussie flavours into a fruit salad that she made. Norm and I tried it and can honestly say that it was the best fruit salad that I have ever tasted. That's quite a rave. And I cannot remember what she said it was, but I do know that it was fantastic. It was fruit and, and summer in the middle of winter. Hmm, good taste description, eh, fellas? Oh, mate, had I wonder what she put in. How can I make it myself? It was a real taste experience. Ben, what do you reckon she put into it? My... Rainforest rub, maybe? Mullen Bimbi Madness? Well, one of the really great flavour enhancers for fruits, obviously forest berry herb, lemon myrtle would work. There'd be a whole host of things. We'll have to refer this to really anybody who wants to be creative with, foot, with, uh, with the herbs and the fruits. Ryeberries would be great, wild limes would be great. Any of them, you grab them, put them into an international fruit salad and you've turned the flavours upside down. You ready, Benjamin? Sure am. Hey, I'm getting dessert again. I love it. I'll sit here, why not? Have you got the damper with you? Sure have. Hey, Jared. There you go, guys. Mate, we've got a surprise for you. Looks good, eh, guys? Looks fantastic, mate. Take a seat. Cool. Grab the light. The interesting thing here is that Jared is a baker by trade. He's been helping us out the back, and he's never cooked damper apart from today when he actually prepared this particular one for us as a quick one uh, and a standby damper for the, uh, for the show. So mate, you could break the bread. I'm often asked what makes a bread a damper? Well the word comes from a practice of bakers in Old England. They used to dampen down their ovens at the end of a day's baking 
by covering the leftover coals with ash. Mate, I would love to try the bread. Yeah, Just throw a piece. Looks Looking great. great. So, smell the blue cheese coming out there. Again, we've got the recipes right on the there. website, and it's been another exercise of uh, literally taking international food and turning it upside down on Dining Down Under. So my ice cream's in the freezer. I'll grab it and start to, uh, start to serve. How are you guys doing? Oh, Not too bad. Oh. Just about to put the rocket lettuce that's been dressed with some glass-aid ryeberry juice on the plate. And we go, a bit of sweetness to the dish. And how's the seafood looking, Ben? Oh, sensational. Guys, we have a guest good. already. I'm going to uh, move on. We'll follow you shortly. See you out here. Hi, Joel. How are you? How you doing? Good. There you go, mate. You've got a dessert to, uh, to go. I'll just uh, have a look at that. That's good. Turn it the right way. Excellent. So Nigel's actually been working with us for the whole week as we're filming here for, uh, for these episodes of Dining Down Under. And uh, mate, you've been an absolute champion. <laughs> Driving cars, being a gopher, get into it before it melts. Every chef has a paella recipe, but not like this one of Ben's. Prawns, scallops, squid and fish are flavoured with lemon aspen fruits. And bush tomato chutney base is complemented with red desert dust. We also had a letter Guys, looking terrific. We also had a letter from um, a viewer, from uh, Scott uh, Tandanini, Toronto, Canada. How about that? Dear Vic, I'm 15 years old and watch you guys every week on PBS. I really like to cook and I want to try some of the Aussie flavours, but I can't find them anywhere. I see you use them on the show every week, so what gives? Well. It's an important point. These native flavours are only just starting to be commercialised. It's only been a couple of decades and they've gone from the wild all the way through to really commercial species. Slowly, they're getting into plantations, the volumes are getting up and we're starting to move these products all over the world. So they are coming out and about. We're suggesting substitutes on the website. You can get all these dishes, all the menus and the recipes, as well as alternate Ingredients, alternate ingredients to replace the native Australian flavours. So, what did you think of the dessert? Excellent. Really good. Okay. So you'll be able to make that dessert as well that Nigel's enjoying anywhere around the world over coming years. Watch out for them. They are coming to stores near you. Uh, and really it's a whole Australian movement as we grab international fusion cuisine and turn it upside down. Well, let's go guys. Rachel, have a dessert. Excellent, thank you. Who's sitting where? Oh, well, this, I've got the fish. Ben's ginger prawn or shrimp dish use the citrusy lemon aspen fruits and lemon myrtle leaf to enhance the natural citrus notes you'll find in Australian ginger. So our recipes are on the website. I'm looking forward to tasting that. That looks sweet. Mm. And yet so simple, it just comes together like that. You can do that in your sleep. It's great. Seconds. Yeah, it takes no time at all. And the great thing is you don't have to boil past, you don't have to cook it. Just warm the noodles and it works. Rachel, get into it, have a taste, see what you think. Recipes on the website, I think we've done a great job here because there really is some different international influences here. We've turned international food upside down yet again. Join us next time. Cheers. Sylvia, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm hogging dessert. <laughs> And I thought I might just dig into my own duck dish. <laughs> While the tasting's going on, let's review the flavours and ingredients of our dishes and maybe talk about some substitutes. Mark's paperbark smoked duck with Illawarra plum sauce could easily be made substituting an ordinary plum sauce and maybe adding some pine nuts to come closer to the flavour of the Illawarra plum. So Sylvie, what do you think? It's very nice. It's got a decided salty taste. Saltiness? Okay. Yeah. You like it? Delicious. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so a Riesling with its fruitiness, mm -hmm. cutting with the salt, that's going to work, that's going to work. And again, I think what we're looking at for so many of the uh, the dishes is really as how we can start to complement those flavours of salt with bitter. So what about the dessert here? We've got the blue cheese mm. has got a few aromatic, almost pungent characters as well. So possibly we could also 
Maybe a sticky with this? A stick would work really well, yeah, definitely. So nice sweet flavours to go with the, um, with the blue cheese. We've got some nice aromatics as well from the lemon myrtle, don't Even forget. Even port fig, I think a port would complement the fig flavour quite well. Okay, and I'm guessing that we could also even put a stout with it. Why not? Okay. Something a bit different. Mate, pass me one of your skewers, please. This is the poached one? Excuse us, Sylvia. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have uh, all the recipes on the show are on the website, as always. And um, the other thing is that uh, we've explored a, a number of dishes here. We're really trying hard to turn international cuisine upside down, so join us again next time on Dining Down Under. So you're putting on the saltiness of the, uh, of the prosciutto. To balance it again. Let's, let's go, go fellas, it. let's eat. We have a guest for dinner. Good evening. Good evening. So Michelle's joined us. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Have a bowl of soup. What I'll do is I'll uh, you can work on our. Oh, that looks beautiful. Great. Our dessert at the end. Oh. Just recapping today's dishes. Mark's braised chicken broth gets its main flavour from the Actually, seasoning did you blend my I call cigar and uh, port. <laughs> and your slippers as well. <laughs> you look comfortable anyway. Oh, I need to relax, mate. It's been a hard day. Michelle, have a taste. Let me see what oh, you yeah. think. Looks just beautiful. Mmm, lovely. Well, she's making the right noises, that's what we <laughs> want. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, we, we started at Banjo's. We, uh, in fact, your old haunt. It is, yes. I used to work there uh, many moons ago. Vic, that's where we met quite you some yonks. time ago. Yonks ago, that's the word. <laughs> so all of these recipes are on the website, so have a look at that. I think we've turned international cuisine upside down once again. So, till next time. Cheers. Bon Cheers. appétit. No, very nice. Oh, good. Myself, it was a good one.